because I was looking at it and like the robot minion is supposed to be a tiny construct. But I'm not sure if its worth is considered tiny. Uh, I mean, it, you know, he's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just downsize his uh, token a little bit and, you know, make it only take up like a quarter of the square. He's tiny. It's like a toy replica I bought. Well, hi. That could totally carry grenades and bombs and stuff. <laughs> Easy peasy. Hand wave. I have started the stream, by the way. Alrighty. Alrighty. So you guys are... Uh, this is some sometime after the the fight, um, but not before, or but before any kind of resting. So you've been told, you know, you've been thanked profusely. People are are recovering themselves. The NCR has has started to make their way in and uh, reclaim what was theirs, what is theirs. They're not quite sure how they're saying it, but um, they are taking over. Long story short, and you see them milling about, taking your names, taking your information. Uh, Ethan, you, uh, get approached by, uh, one of the NCR people that are, happen to know your, your parents and their history, and they want to recruit you to, you know, do some investigation for them, and, uh, check out what's going on at, at the Crater Lake area, and see what kind of resources can be, can be pulled for the NCR. Alrighty. Uh, and you, 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 you agree to, to do this, um, maybe a, a little undecided as to how much they get versus how much you get, but let's get there alive first. Uh, so that is the priority. <laughs> that's the only way to get this stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you, Braum and, uh, Emmett are, are, you know, bit, Braum is very busy in signing lots of documents and, and rushing around to try and, uh, make all the NCR people feel a little more comfortable. Um, and, and not trying to hide things, maybe, uh, you know, slamming a few doors shut, not ready to quite give them. We'll move over to the Withervale map until we leave here. Actually, I just realized I'm on the DM one on the wrong thing. Hold on. But if you say I love you. Apologies. Rejoining as player now. Okay. So, um, tying up some other loose ends in Withervale. Braum is kind of hiding some doors of things. Um, doesn't really want to reveal all eggs in basket right away. But uh, the rest of the town is is licking their wounds. Anna de Grey is kind of grabbing each kid in a line and just kind of turning them around, pulling their ears back and lifting their hair up to check for various wounds and things and kind of pushes them off off towards uh, off towards the, the bathhouse, getting them cleaned up. Everything's just kind of crazy going on here. Um, everybody's coming up and, and shaking hands and, and thanking you for your help. Uh, Baldwin, I imagine, is back there checking on, on Tobias. He's giving, uh, Anders a wide berth. And Sedan, Maeve is, Maeve is standing over Sedan, who's, I think, still passed out. Uh, no one's really kind of, everybody's tending to what they're capable of, but the doctor and, uh, I'd imagine Liam, are running around kind of tending to the wounded, trying to stabilize people as they can, get them set up, getting getting people back to where they were before. Uh, Emmett kind of is, is checking, checking what he has left as far as supplies and people, and he he uh, motions over to, to Bishop and, and 1218, who were on the guard towers with him, and just... Thank you so much for your help. You, uh, you really had quite the arsenal to attack that catapult with. I haven't seen some of that. You got, an, you got any more of those? 
Hmm. Perhaps if the NCR would be willing to uh, requisition a few. Uh, at, at that comment, he, he lets out a big sigh and he says, Yes, yes, I suppose things are going to be a bit different around here now. And he, yeah. uh... It'll still be for the better. Don't worry about it. Well, you seem like a, a trustworthy type. I, I hope that you're right. I hope, uh, I just hope Brom knows what he's getting into. And, uh, what would you guys like to kind of do as your last moments here? Are you... I believe you guys fought through the night, so you're looking at some time in the morning. Um, what are you wanting to do in terms of, like, rest? Do you want to spend a day here? Is there anything you want to... Any loose ends you want to tie up in Withervale before you do whatever you're setting out to do? need to unglue my hands. <laughs> 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 I don't know about the rest of you, but I would uh, very much like to uh, close up some of these bullet wounds and tend to some of these burns. Yeah, at some point, I, I think you guys would be on the top of Liam's check on them list. So he's coming over and bandaging you. <laughs> Twelve get, eighteen, you're you're just glued. Get the cattle prod. You're just um, glued together, going in circles, like beeping or something, <laughs> like help. <laughs> <laughs> exclamation points in angry <laughs> faces. But, um, yeah, his, uh, his daring plan to goo up other people ended up his poor pincer hands are <laughs> all a mess now. So, if you got some turpentine. Uh, yeah. Mr. Robot Bartender that I can't remember the name of right now is, is definitely all about it. He's running around and trying to help with other stuff, you know, but just kind of like your program to take care of the humans. He's programmed to take care of the town. So anything that's broken, he's trying to like rehinge doors and, and patch holes in walls. And he sees you kind of exclamation point beeping, like going in a circle and, and he'll, he'll come over and kind of look at what is going on with you and, and race back to, back to his bar and he comes out with this big big glass jug of clear liquid that just has three x's on it <laughs> and and points it points at you and and uh tries to dump some of that all over your your stuck together parts yes good and it, it probably zaps you a little bit but you know it, it does its job it definitely sizzles away sizzles away the glue that you had on you you can move again although you know, those around you seem to give you a, a few steps of space, because it smells kind of toxic, whatever just got poured all over you. It's fine. Is that robot drunk? <laughs> His manipulators were sticky. Very thankful. Uh, you know getting the the thumbs up image from you or the at least the exclamation yeah. points go away he uh brings the jug back to his stuff and continues to tend to things uh you you guys can see sadan kind of um being helped up by the doctor and he he looks like he's got his head bandaged pretty badly uh soaked through with you know what what appears to be red amongst the white bandages but he he does look to be conscious All right, and then uh, Ethan and Anders. Uh, Anders, I'm sure you're kind of keeping an eye. You've had a connection with Anna de Grey, and you're probably keeping away from Baldwin and Tobias. Sure or am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's giving you side eye, but you know you're just like, oh, I'm gonna walk over here. Uh, you see Anna de Grey kind of checking the kids, and everything looks to be going well over there. You know, she she seems busy, but everybody seems okay don't hear anybody you know you hear some some little light crying but no sobbing no crying out in pain then ethan you come down from your perch on one of the 
One of the houses. Oh, actually, you're out there. Never mind. You are already off the porch of the houses. So you're you're just checking to make sure a little Frank's in place, and you uh, you know the NCR people are kind of shuffled around you because they've heard tale of your parents, and they kind of wanted to see <laughs> see who you were, see if you were all that they they heard you would be, what kind of adventurer you were. And so, uh, you know, after you get approached by what you imagine is the the person in charge here setting up the NCR outpost for Withervale, you, uh, as he walks away to go deal with uh, Braum and sign some official papers, a couple of the, the lieutenants and, and, you know, below that for, for NCR people are, are approaching you. And they're kind of giving you, you know, some bottle caps and, and saying, if you see anything useful... Uh, you know, pull, pull it aside for me. No, I'm looking for, you know, you got any of those, you know, magazines? It's like, I, I haven't read any of them. If you see any of those comics, yeah, get some of those comics. And they're all just giving you this, this random wish list of things that aren't really mechanically helpful, but just to pass the time. Yeah. All right, all right. Don't make a big scene about it. You're kind of a celebrity at the moment. Uh, everybody's giving you their papers and bottle caps, and you end up walking out of there with, uh, as you as you total it up, you're walking out of there with like 20 bottle caps worth of lists of things. Then uh, they they must trust you already. Wonders the name has. All right. So as as the morning turns into noon, um, you hear you hear the lunch bell, and uh, they're setting up a uh, one of the the place where you used to go for food and whatnot. It's got a big hole in the roof right now, so they're kind of just setting up uh, picnic tables all out in the middle, uh, kind of over here, and one in front of Brahm's house over here, and people are just kind of picnic tabling it and. Um, they're asking you what what your plans are. What do you what do you got going on now that you saved us? Brahma sits at the head of the table. Of course, you're you're welcome to stay here as long as you'd like. But um, I, I imagine things are going to be a bit different, and and I'm not quite sure what that's going to mean for Withervale. Between the lot of us, I think we've got a bit of a checklist of things to get done. A checklist? Well, uh, uh, right, right. Um, uh, I mean, our our supplies were windled down by this fight, but I mean, whatever way we can we can help you is is there any supplies or anything you need? You're you're welcome to rest here for as long as you like. Uh, Ethan will look around. At his companions, and just kind of be like, "So, anything y'all need? Anything in particular? Anything y'all need to do or want?" You all need to rest. I completely agree. Right, right. Of course. Uh, well, we we've set up a, a. I mean, there there are a number of residents that uh, their houses are destroyed so we've set up uh, the guard station and, and turned that into less of a jail and more of a you know bunkhouse kind of thing um, but we have food water and beds for a anybody that needs them and of course you you all are more than welcome to to stay here and rest the the night or for a few days whatever whatever you need oh thank you for the offer I do believe we'll take up on it. Well, thanks for the sub, sir. So, yeah, I'm just gonna... Like we discussed in our um, session prep thing for this chapter, I am going to make it a little more whatever you guys want to do. So I'm just gonna let it hang and let you guys decide your own urgency. Um based on what happened, because I feel like you guys have been running, running, running. Um, you got to Withervale, they're like, go go over here, and you went and chased them down, and then they were chasing you, and blah, blah. 
So instead of that high paced kind of thing, um, the world is just going to keep going based on what you guys do now. So now the world is spinning around what you've done to the raiders or whatever the hell group just happened. Um, yeah, that that is going to keep progressing in the background based on what you guys are doing now. So to recap what's happened briefly, you know that uh, there was a group that went down to Sand's Rest right before the battle. Um, you know that the NCR is now in Withervale. And you know that, as far as you can tell, you kicked those raiders the hell out of that area. Um, a number of them are dead. And it's really gross around Withervale. A lot of them are dead, from what I remember. A whole lot. Yeah, it's like blood-stained, gross, mm. slimy stuff. And it smells great. <laughs> That'll hurt him. Yeah, I suppose it will. But the rest is definitely needed. Afterwards, uh, I don't know. I don't really have anything really to do. I've got a couple of thoughts. One being, now that we've kicked these raiders out, that forces out at least weekend if they haven't completely left. We should either give chase or at least go check out their previous base of operations. I'm sure they left quite a fair share of goodies behind in their rush. It is possible. We could also go through uh, what they brought with them. Perhaps they have enough here to uh, help restock the city a little bit. And yeah, there's that. That's a whole lot easier. One is on the way to the other. Right. Now, first things first, we should all rest up. Yep. All right. A little bit of hand waving goes by. Um, Night, night falls pretty fast. Everybody's spent, like, from the fight overnight. Bedtime is coming, like, uh, you know, old people time. Like, 4.30 comes along. It's still light outside, but people are like, Aah. they're all getting getting ready for bed. There's uh, quite a few few guards um, that, that perished in the fight, but... They've been they've been supplemented by uniformed NCR people who are now taking posts. Uh, you find Emmett kind of at the guard station, just kind of checking people in, giving them bunk assignments, and uh, everybody seems to be settling in for the night. You guys join them and make your make your rest. During that evening, um, Bishop would probably go and talk to one of the, like, higher-ranking, uh, soldiers from the NCR. Just to have them kind of pass along, uh, uh communicate to the gunrunners, or, um, that he was dispatched from. Just kind of stating, yeah, I'm here, I've established contact with the NCR, also have a, another city that might be interested in some of our wares. And, uh, we're waiting for their orders. Yeah, he, uh, he, he seems to take, he, he knows who you are. I mean, you, you've worked with, it's not a big operation over there, so they all know who, who you are and are able to, uh, report that information. It seems their communication is a little more, even though, uh, 1218 advanced the bartender's reach of, uh, radio the ncr was came prepared with their own so they're able to relay your message um do you have you have a point of contact that resides permanently at the ncr outpost or are they kind of back and forth uh typically it'd be whoever like the highest rank and commanding officer there would be my okay. contact at whatever outpost that I go to. Gotcha. So you're you're kind of solo, and then you report to the NCR leads right. in different outposts. Okay. Yep, and they kind of point me towards the quartermaster to drop off wares and that kind of stuff. Yeah, 
All right. So they uh, they take your information down and they they're like, oh, you you have another you have another place to sell to. So is that a response from them? That was more the the person that you walked up to, the NCR sergeant or or what have you, that took the information. He's just trying to make notes complete. Doesn't want to yeah. get asked questions he can't answer. Yeah. Just be like, um, yeah, no, a couple of the individuals in uh, Withervale have shown some interest. All right, all right. All right, so he he just kind of nods and waits for you to finish up, and then he's just like, "All right, I'll uh, I'll pass it along, and I'll let you know if I hear back from him." Should uh, we got a we got a set up time in the morning to to hear back? Hopefully, if the command is is uh, responding promptly, we got a lot of information to let him know. A lot has happened. Understood. Understood. I'm not expecting a response back from the media. And he just kind of he's nods and walks away. All right. So, barring anybody else wanting to do something before passing out, the night is uneventful. At twelve eighteen, is just gonna work on it's worth a bit. He has this whole plan that he's working on, but doesn't quite get it finished before needing to finally hit loading screen for a while. <laughs> Was Bitsworth, I, I don't remember, did Bitsworth get bitsed? Is he real badly hurt, or are you just no, upgrading? He's, he's, he's working on some upgrades. Ah. Opening them up and adding things, but it's not quite functional just yet. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, even though it looks a little worse for wear, his his little top hat is still stuck to him. And, uh, seems like upgrades are coming. You work well into the night before having to power down and do some updates. Uh, morning comes quickly for you all. And, uh, the light starts peeking in. And, uh, you hear rustling outside. Everybody's already getting an early start. They early to bed, early to rise. And they're getting to work. Alright, y'all. So what's the plan of action? So are we rummaging through what's here? Yeah. Yeah. Loot the bodies. No. <laughs> yep. On a grand scale. <laughs> yes. Make a pile or rows. Uh, what what's left of her body? Um, it's it's a mix of you know bones and guts and sinew. It's all been kind of clumped together with the other bodies. Uh, you guys. Recovered some things, and I think we, we briefly touched on that at the end of the fight. Uh, before we took our break, um, there was a, a certain coin that Liam noticed uh, linked back to... Linked back to some kind of Latin phrase, uh, which some of you may or may not know. Hints at a, a Legion influence, either with just her or... Possibly with the raiders, you're not you're not quite sure, but that was found on her guts, pockets. <laughs> um, as far as other loot, I know Kyle was talking about having something, so I will let him deal with that. Uh, so the bulk of these raiders, um, that you guys, you know, miscellaneously shot slash small robot, large grenaded. Um, 
they weren't instructed to bring a whole lot with them. Um, with their noticeably uh, lower quality weapons uh, and armaments. Um, and the amount of damage done to most of these raiders. Um, in terms of equipment, there's little salvageable. Um, some raiders uh, have even literally nothing. They're just unarmed uh, with no gear on them. Um, you do find... Uh, 121 crappy, crappy bullets. Uh, the D6 bullets that are considered junk. Um, and then... Hey, bullets are bullets. <laughs> bullets are bullets. Uh, and that, none of that. Uh, and three... Uh, jet inhalers um and i'm you find about 20 used jet inhalers uh but you find three active okay all right so as you guys are walking around looting anders you're um you're feeling a little bit more tired than the rest of everybody seems to be a little more exhausted um, and when you guys come across that, that jet, you know, just like your eye twitches just a little bit, you, uh, just a little bit. I'm going to try to pocket one. Sleight of hand? Unless you're just like, give me that. No, I don't want them to know, but... And you say that, you're like, I don't want you to know this. And like, almost as if you're still dreaming or something when you go to grab it. So whoever's, whoever's grabbing uh, and taking inventory of stuff, you see Anders just kind of drunken, sleepily reach for one of the jets. And uh, whoever you got, basically whoever's holding the loots gets to decide if you give Anders one because he did, was not subtle. He can have it. But Bishop's going to look at him and be like, "Twelve eighteen. What exactly do you think you're doing?" And a twelve eighteen wants to hoard all the drugs. In <laughs> he can't use them. It's kind of more of a I'm protecting you from yourself. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I was. I was giving that... it to you, of course. <laughs> so twelve eighteen will take hold of these. It will be like extreme measures only. <laughs> situations. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, sure, 1218 can hold on to the jet. Not like that we have anything else. <laughs> yeah, Anders wasn't too too slick about it either. Kind of like a little kid reaches their hand out while looking in another direction. And then 1218 is just like... Just like mm. <laughs> Swats his hand gently. <laughs> Yeah, you are still made big, of metal, so it's with still... A big metal, with a big metal manipulator. Just Gently. <laughs> quote, unquote. Um, <laughs> so how many of those was that? Three. Three? I have a marked in my Tory list. You have them. Okay, and 1218 has, like, uh, this stuff in a bag, or, like, do you open up your middle and store it in there? Like, how, where do you store? Um, he has, like... Like, it's almost like a bag of mini bags where, like, all his <laughs> individual, like, tool sets are stuffed into. He'll he'll slide it into one of the pockets on there. Gotcha. Nice and secure for no grab-ins later. Got it. Alright, so, um, as you guys are walking around looting, and, and I imagine, you know, helping schlump some of the bodies in, into a pile together, um... Bonding exercise. Yeah. The, the rest <laughs> of the town appreciates the help. <laughs> we all made this mess. It's worth us carrying, like, a finger and some toes, like, to help. <laughs> He's 
He's got his one little manipulator that he can lift things with. Yeah, uh, as as you guys are doing all this, um, Anna de Grey is, is kind of got, uh, you know, what looks like some kind of gross, uh, long, blood-spattered apron on and is kind of helping as well. Um, and she, uh, she wipes, wipes the sweat away and kind of leaves some blood on her face as she, she walks up to you, you all, and is, uh, looks over her shoulder to kind of check where some other people are. And she says, so, uh, so what's your plan after this? I mean, we appreciate the help lugging the bodies, but now that Withervale's gone to shit, are you, you, you sticking around, or...? I might. I mean, we can always use more guns. Well, unfortunately, most of the raiders here seem to, uh, not have any. I was hoping there might have been a nice piece hidden among them. Yeah, they don't strike me as much advanced, and she kind of kicks one of the bodies near her. Little bastards even used kids. That big wooden tank back there. What kind of fucking people do that? How are the kids, by the way? She she looks over at you and kind of squints a little. And she's, they're all fine. They all checked out. No one's hurt. I mean, the three that were shoved into that tank, they're going through a bit of, uh, they're going through a bit of withdrawal right now. But, but they'll 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 pull through. We got we got some stuff to help them out, but they got a long road ahead of them. It's not gonna be pretty. I think they're in good hands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, thanks. I guess. I, what the hell happened? Like, I I can't pretend like I'm not gonna talk. What the hell happened to you? You beat Tobias within an inch of his life. What? And now you're standing here talking to me like nothing's wrong. Are you going feral? No. Is there more to that sentence, son? Because it sounds like there's more to it. You feeling okay? You wrong in the head? You get hit? Jet's a hell of a drug, Annie. Uh, she just kind of, her eyes go wide and she nods her head uh, very slowly. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it is, it is, yeah. I just didn't, I didn't realize that y'all were partaking of that. Uh, okay, yeah, I suppose Jet will make you do that. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, you seem pretty normal right now. I I gotta tell you, if you want to stick around here and, and you know, recover any kind of relationship you had there with, with Tobias or Baldwin or any of those people, you might wanna, you might wanna say your piece with them. I, I, I... I Baldwin keeps giving you this a side eye, and she kind of like leans to the side, and and Baldwin is is helping clean up another pile of bodies, but he's got his eye on you, and he does one of those like classic like psh, spit things on the ground in your general direction. You might want to address that. Is all I'm saying. So we're uh, heading out soon, right, guys? <laughs> <clears throat> well, where are you guys gonna head? Well, there's a couple different places, as I keep telling people. There's... There was a one old... There's an old junkyard. That I believe... It was... Was it Ethan, 1218, and... It was Anders, right? We were the three looking for that? Yeah, yep. we were looking for that. Yeah. That's why we came up here in the first place. And then we stumbled upon the mess that your little town was in. 
Yeah, this little town's always in a mess. You're looking for that... Looking for the... <laughs> you guys are chasing a rumor, you know that, right? I mean... I mean, maybe it's there, I don't know, but... I mean, it, it's been long talked about and no one has never found it. I mean, so... it's not like junkyards don't exist. There's no. plenty of people with junk junkyards. No. You're true, you're true, I get it, but... I don't know, that's a that's a lot to risk. I, I mean, after what you guys displayed, what you're capable of, what you displayed in this battle here, it just seems silly for you all to go chasing a, a little rumor like that. You got any, uh, you got a map or something? I'm assuming we don't. Yeah, no, you you don't you don't have a direct map. Um, when the NCR approached you, uh, Ethan, they handed you the uh, brochures, like old timey mm -hmm. Crater Lake brochures, which include a map. But it was like Withervale wasn't on it, Chem wasn't on it, the NCR outpost. Right. It was all <laughs> way different than what you see now. So, um, if you mention that, she, like she'll just chuckle at you, Be like, oh, mm -hmm. all right. These fanciful rumors of yours are what made what made my family's laugh, and I'm gonna I'm following in their footsteps. They found such they found plenty of such rumors. I ain't gonna quit. Yeah, the, as in video game terms, there's like plus respect for for you over her now. She just kind of nods at you and she's <laughs> like, "All right, I mean that's a good enough reason as any. I mean y'all gotta find your own." Your own reason for breathing out here and, I mean, chasing a dream? That sounds, sounds like a pretty noble, noble way to go. And y'all are just following him? I mean, to be fair, I don't really have much else to do right now until I get new orders. Someone needs to make sure they don't do something stupid. Yeah, and I've just been kind of going with the flow for a couple of decades. No reason to stop that now. She she just kind of nods in her respect and flings another body on the pile, and she's like, "Well, I mean, I don't have much much weight in this town aside from taking care of the kids, but uh, you know, you're always welcome here. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know what Withervale's got in its future." Now that the NCR done stomped all over the town. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep doing what I do, and, and I, I hope to see you guys come through again. You, you said you're waiting on waiting on hearing back, uh, Bishop? Hmm, yes, um, there was a, uh, I, well, I work for the gun runners. I think I've mentioned this before. I'm just waiting to hear back from Rook, see what he wants me to do next. In the meantime, I'm free to really do whatever I want. That's the kind of contract work we like out here. Well, I'll keep my ear to the ground, and if I hear something, I'll, uh... Well, I mean, there's no real good way to get a hold of people nowadays anymore, but... But, uh, I'll let you know. I mean, you guys know the password to get in here, and as of now, that hasn't changed. And she kind of looks over at the towers, where the NCR people are kind of uh, pointing and, and telling Emmett to go go move here and move there. She's like, I, I don't know what's going to change in these next few days, but I'm sure I speak for everybody when I say y'all are welcome welcome around here. Yes, of course. The hospitality is very much appreciated. And I'm just going to give her kind of like a brilliant smile. Ooh, this guy got pretty messed up. Guts everywhere. Toss that one of mine? Uh, I don't know. What was it? He's asking whether or not that's one of the guys that he killed. <laughs> Oh my god. 
Yeah, uh, that whole minute Jack, was just kind of a real blur. Yeah, everybody seems kind of afraid of you now, Anders. Like, the, um, even Braum and Emmett haven't really addressed you directly and kind of pivot themselves around you. Anna DeGray is really the only one that's actually con up to you and spoken words to you since they saw what you did. Uh, they're just kind of giving you your room, your space, to figure things out. Um, but she, she does, before you guys, you know, kind of close up your conversation, she, uh, she says, you know what, if you guys are gonna, wh when were you planning on taking off here? Because I, I got something to give you, but I really, I would prefer if it was, uh, you know, not in the public eyes, because I'm not really supposed to have this still. I was supposed to turn in all my equipment when I left the, the guard. Um, but if you guys want to stop by, stop by, uh, my house sometime before you leave. I, I got something that might help you in your travels out there. It ain't gonna bring me any luck anymore. So you you might as well take it. Hmm. I'm sure we can find the time before we head up. I mean, if you have the time now, I can come with you. It's, uh, it's a little hefty, so I would recommend, like, coming... I'm gonna look over the night. Yeah, yeah, what what he said. Uh, you know, it's gonna... It, it could probably fit in one of your bags there, but it, it's a bit lumpy, so... Um, just, just stop by whenever you... I, 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 whenever you got time. Um, but I, I, I gotta get back to the kids. They're all coming out of the bath now, and they're about to jump more mud and get all messy again. Might as well start getting a sense of normal back in this town, so... Uh, let me know S sometime soon. Just just let me know before you leave, okay? Hmm, of course. And she'll, uh, kind of wipe her hands on her already still dirty apron and kind of walk, walk back towards the orphanage. All right. So, uh, just as quickly as, uh, morning came around, I mean, a day of progressively stacking bodies to burn, I mean, it, go it makes the day go by pretty fast, so, you guys got different burn piles going, uh, you guys have taken as much as you can, the jet, the bullets, um, there was really no armor to speak of on these guys, but y you've taken what you can from them, and you light everything on fire, um, and as it's burning... Uh, the lunch bell rings. Sa same as before. Got the picnic table sitting down. You see, uh, the kids are, are taking up most of the one table, and they look all, all cleaner before, but you see the three kids that were in the tank just a little kind of huddled by themselves. Uh, a little quieter than the other kids seem to be, but, uh, everybody seems to be a little better cleaned up. You see some of the people that, uh, had made their way into the doc's house, uh, make their way out. They got, uh, they're on crutches or bandages have now appeared on them, but they're moving and, and you seeing them up and around kind of gives, gives you a little sense of, uh, returning to normal. Everybody's kind of moving on. Even, uh, Sedan and Maeve take a seat at the table, uh, across from you and they're quietly, quietly eating their food. I want to find Baldwin Tobias. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, they were not at the table. So you go and find uh, Tobias. He's actually still in the doctor's office, um, laying. Oh, on... I'm not gonna find. I'm not gonna find Tobias with a Baldwin next to him. That is correct. Uh, yeah. Especially not. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one word. Baldwin Tobias. Oh, okay. So there so he's there too. Okay. I thought he was alone. Um, well, I mean, they are separate people, but uh you didn't see them separate all that much before, and now that Tobias is laying on a laying on a cot, which looks like sleeping in the doctor's office, Tobias is just kinda sitting next to him in a chair. 
and uh, there's there's a uh, a couple of people in the doctor's office kind of tending to some other people laying down. But um, you don't have to go in there if you don't want to. But if you ask around where Tobias or Baldwin are, everybody will tell you it's in the doctor's office. No, I wanted to go to the doctor's office anyway. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm gonna I'm going to very pointedly leave my bat at the front door. And walk up to where Tobias is. Um, yeah, so you you, uh, <laughs> you leave it, like, you know, leaning against the doorway. You walk up to where you see Tobias laying in bed. He looks like he's asleep. And uh, Baldwin's just kind of got his head down next to him. And uh, as you step up to him, floor creaks a little bit. And he, he looks up. And he stands up real quick. And kind of pushes the chair back a little bit, and just kind of looks at you, like like he's poised, ready to ready to do something if you move. And he just kind of looks at you like what, with a questioning look. What are you doing here? I took Jet during the battle. I thought it would help. I'm sorry this happened. Um, he, <laughs> he was not, like, of all the responses he expected, um, you apologizing to his face was not one of them, and he, he seems to soften a little bit, but still say kind of guarded, and he says, you thought it would help, huh? I don't know yeah. that anybody's ever been helped by Jet. Makes those raiders into what they are. Look what you did to poor Tobias here. Couldn't even speak up to defend himself. Oh, I appreciate your apology, but... I don't even know if he's gonna pull out of this. And he just kinda looks down at Tobias, whose head is, is completely wrapped. His face is all swollen. Uh, he's got a big bulb on his, like, jaw. Uh, it looks like... It's uh, been kind of stitched up near his lip. And he's uh, he's just like, I've been, he, he, he just kind of keeps staring at Tobias. And he's like, I've been with Tobias. I don't even remember how long anymore. When, when things happened, I mean, I lost everybody. Everybody I knew. And... I mean, I know he doesn't talk, but he's been my companion since shit hit the fan for me. And if he doesn't make it out of this, I don't... And he kind of looks up at you and then just angrily, like, wipes his eyes. Like, I don't... I just... I don't know what I'm going to do if he doesn't make it out of this. And he swallows hard. And he says, uh... I appreciate you owning up to what you've done, but I think it's probably best if you're not here when he wakes up. If if he wakes up, I understand up. that. And he, um, I, uh, I, uh, I wish I knew what the two of you had. Good luck to you both. <laughs> He kind of straightens up, and he just, like, a, a little smirk comes on the side of his mouth, and he just shakes his head a little bit. He says, you, you confound me, ghoul. I don't, every time I think I got you pegged. And, uh, he straightens up a little bit, and he, he straightens his hand out towards you, over Tobias. He says, I, I wish you luck in whatever I'll you do. I'll take his hand. And he, he shakes your hand, and he sits back down and kind of just looks back at Tobias. You seen the doc around? I know he's probably very busy, but... Uh... I wanted to ask him a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe he was last filling up, uh, filling up an order at the at the storage, and he kind of nods his head over towards, like, the food and food and water storage barn thing that they have. He uh, he said he needed some fresh air, so he decided to go fill up 
fill up our supply. Well, thank you. And uh, good luck again. I hope I see you both again. He, he just kind of, hmm. <laughs> not agreeing, not denying, and grunts in reply. And I'm going to walk out and find the dock. Yeah, you, um, there, there's a, a, uh, a, a uh, older woman inside of the, the food and storage with a clipboard and a pen writing furiously as, uh, she kind of addresses the, the group of people that have formed around her, three or four people that are all handing her papers and lists and she's just, okay, stop. Okay, look, I told you already that we're on low supply. You will get your stuff tomorrow. You go. I've already talked to you. And she's turning and she's like kind of handing uh, cans and um, bottles of things off a shelf to the doc um, who is in, you know, designated white coat that looked maybe like a lab coat at one point, but it's so dirty now. It's it's barely white anymore. Um, and he's filling up what looks to be an old dirty cooler with all the cans and bottles as she hands them things and ticks things off of a clipboard. All right. All right, I think that's all of your list, Doc. And he fills up, he, he clamps it shut and, uh, you know, pulls the, pulls the handle and starts to walk out. Uh, and I imagine you're coming up from there. And he, he kind of, is taken. He he like was staring at the ground for a second. Looks up and just sees you. Oh, uh, can I help you? Uh, maybe. I'm certainly not going to impose, but I wondered if you had some supplies for sale or. We might be heading out of town soon. Uh, you're... If you don't have the stock for it, I understand, but... I mean, uh, he he kind of uh, looks back behind him and kind of um, grabs, grabs you by the arm and kind of ushers you out the back, probably like out this way. And he's like, uh, what, what exactly are you looking for? What, what, oh, what have you done? Oh, uh... Bandages, antiseptic. Oh. And uh, he, he, like, changes tone instantly. He's like, oh, just, like, medical kit stuff? Like, regular? Yeah, medic yeah reg regular medical kit stuff. Oh, okay. And he starts, um, kind of indicates for you to follow him as he's walking back to the doctor's house. And he's like, yeah, I mean, uh, we're, we're in short supply, but uh, I think I can spare some stuff. It, I mean, your group helped us all survive this whole thing, so, you know. Where would I, where, where would we all be if not for you? So, uh, I can put a kit together for you all if, if that's what you're looking for, something to get you through. That would be, that would be wonderful. Um, and he kind of, like, as he walks into the house and, uh, sets, sets down his, uh, luggage from the food storage, he starts directing what look like nurses to go and disperse the supplies. He says, he turns to you and says, um, I will need, I will need some time to, to gather that. May, can you, can you give me a couple hours to, to piece together a kit for you? And, and if you come back in, a, in a, about an hour or so, I, uh, I'll have Sounds fine. All uh, right. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I gotta go. And you hear, like, someone waking up and screaming in pain behind you. You get out of here. Okay. And I'm going to head back to the rest of the group. Cool. All right. So Anders went on a mission for a little while. What, what else were you guys wanting to do? You guys finish your lunch. He ends up coming back and joining you up. It's about two in the afternoon. Or if you want, we can just hand wave to... Uh, a few hours from now. Yeah, I think Bishop might have made the argument that we would have given some of the junk rounds to the city, just kind of resupply some of their stuff. Maybe like 75 rounds, 100 rounds, something like that. Yeah, um, 
I'm sure Emmett probably would have been the... If you were looking to flag somebody down, he would have been the point of contact for something like that. And he... He, he almost looks like he's got tears in his eyes when you hand him a bunch of crappy bullets. But he's so... He's so thankful because... Uh, he... Oh, well, my, our supplies were really, really hit hard here. Uh, w this is just, just... God. I mean, this is just the nicest thing. I mean, I we, we've been scouring those dead bodies. We didn't find anything. You guys are so lucky. You must have had all the lucky bodies. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Yeah, that's not the problem. It's what we do. Alright. Okay, so we'll just say of 121, gave away like, what, 75? Okay. So whoever's keeping track of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll subtract that total. Alrighty. Yeah, much appreciated. You definitely earned, as if you didn't have enough clout with Emmett. He, uh, he near teared up on you there. But, uh, yeah, the day, the day keeps, keeps winding down. Holes are patched in, in houses. People are starting to kind of, you know, sign out of the guard station. And uh, as you guys, that that's probably where your packs are, are stuck, you know, where you slept that night. And as you go back to check on it or get stuff from it, you see less and less people's, uh, you know, stuff by their beds. Less and less beds taken up. Seems like people are returning to their residence, their houses as they're able to. And, uh... You see uh, Annie de Grey kind of yelling at some kids that are running circles in the front, in the front of the school, and she waves to y'all as the sun starts to set for the evening. Um, you, uh, Bishop, you pass by the the guard that you gave that note to, uh, for Rook. Right. Yes. Um. And he he just kind of in walking past you, he walks he walks past with what looks like a, a well worn uh, spine broken book that he's reading. But he he looks up as he goes to pass you. And he's like, uh, still haven't heard back. But uh, you know, it, I don't know if you're hanging around, but I'll I'll let you know when I hear back. So uh, still waiting. Lots oh, of stuff to do. Thank you. Yes, of course. Go about your business. Now we'll go about mine. It seems. And he kind of. Curls up his book and nods at you and walks away. Alrighty. So what's the plan, Stans? Not settling in? It's starting to get dark? Things have been we... quiet. Did we want to go back and check out the raiders? That mansion they were at? Since most Ooh, of them appear to yeah. be dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get a good sweep of chem now. Yeah. Go through, find what we can find. Head out in the morning, or um, you said it was evening, starting to get dark. Yes. Yeah, sun is setting. Yeah, no, I think morning would be a good Tomorrow, idea. Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. The we second down night, one more night. Yeah. Um. Twelve eighteen. We'll finish up what he was working on. The... For Bitsworth. For Bitsworth. Cool. Yeah. You guys have turned the guard station. You're. You're. I mean, there's one or two people besides you, but for the most part, you guys have kind of pushed your beds into like a little, a little section of the the jail cells and uh, are making that your planning area. And I imagine twelve eighteen's just. Leaning against one of the walls, just tinkering with Bitsworth. Cursing to hold still. As you zip-zap your way into upgrades for the Bitsworth. How long do those upgrades take? Um, Depending on how many points I put towards it. Uh, since I'm level 4, I have 4 points. So that's why it took 2. It had to do with um, my intelligence modifier. Which is a 3. So it would have taken... Two, two days worth. Two, yeah. Cool. So yeah, you're you're tinkering away with bits worth. Are you keeping this a secret? Like, are you doing it like? Don't look um, at him. No, like he like it looks like he's unfurling 
things and adding long pieces that all like fold up and it's all inside of them. So Bitsworth looks like Bitsworth, but it looks like stuff can happen with Bitsworth. <laughs> like <laughs> collapsing of antennae, maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna add this onto Bitsworth's sheet. Cool beans. Anybody else doing anything else? Looking at any of their other stuff before going to sleep? Or are you guys doing any late night prowling? Uh, I went and picked up the healer's kit. You definitely did that. Yeah, um, when you go into the doctor's house to, to pick up the kit you were owed, you kind of um, see, see Liam off uh, in the distance <coughs> tending to somebody on a cot towards the back of the building. And he just kind of looks up at you. And he just gives you a solemn nod and goes back to his back to his work. And, I reciprocate. And uh, the doc hands you hands you the kit, and he says, "You know, this is, I mean, it's it's one full kit. I couldn't I couldn't really spare anything else, but this should get you what you need for now. And I mean, in a in a few days, weeks, I'm not sure when we're getting another trade through here, but if you think you'll be back, I'll I'll start setting stuff aside. We we all owe you enough." I, I don't know if the NCR is going to resupply us. And he kind of looks around and there's, <clears throat> you guys have noticed over the course of today, there's like more NCR, like there are they breeding? You're not quite sure. There's more NCR popping up. You don't notice any coming through the gates, like in a formal filing way, but there just seems to be new faces everywhere. Um, and he looks over his shoulder at an NCR guard that's posted at the door and says, I'll, I'll, I'll try and, I'll try and keep something on the side for you. Appreciate that, Doc. And, uh, he, he, like, he was trying to whisper to you and you responding in the typical Anders non-whisper. He, he kind of jerks back a little bit and it, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, ha have a good night. You too. Alrighty. Kit acquired. Now, does that have, like, a specific number of charges or something? Or is it just, like... That's a dundit 10. He gonna get you 10? a full healer's kit. It's a whole 10. Yeah, because I was trying to look up the stats for that in, like, gear and crafting or something. It's actually so a 5th edition 10? holdover. Yeah, it's just 10. All right. So, yeah, ten, 10 charges on the heal kit. I don't think we have that in any of our docs. Yeah, you'd have to look at probably player's handbook. I can copy-paste it in there, though. Yeah, we've... It's It's been so long since we've updated those docs. Plus, we are creating something else that it sounds like we'll get to another time. Healer's kit. There you go. Alrighty. So, uh, Anders, you make your way back to the guard station, and as you, um, as you go to climb, climb the steps up to the guard station, you look over towards, uh, Anna DeGray's house, and you see her just kind of sitting on her porch. Um, it's pretty dark. There, there aren't really many stars, because the sky is just kind of grayed over. Um, but you, you can tell she's there, because you see... Uh, periodically, there's a light uh, about the size of a cigarette and a little puff of smoke that goes in front of it. And it just keeps lighting. She seems to just be sitting on her porch. Oh, yeah, she wanted to give us something, didn't she? Do you, is that your stream of consciousness out loudness? Yeah. Just, like, out loud and like, Oh, shit! <laughs> I, uh, go find somebody else. Peyton, what is, let's go to Annie. Um, hold on a second, guys. I think we lost Acheron. Here. Oh, I think we did. I'm like, why is the Discord, why am I Bishop on the Discord? I mean, yes, this is good. I don't know what his accent is. 
Not that. Not that. It, it's something tight-lipped. All right. Great. We'll just continue, or we... There he is! He's Bishop it. Ethan! Uh, didn't anyone give us something tonight? Yes. Yes, she did. Gotta come with me to pick it up? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, so who who's going? Is like all of you going over there? Mm, as far uh, as I'm aware, uh, it was Bishop and Anders. Looks like it's just the two of us. Yeah. E Tell me, team, to tag along. Are you busy? Whenabouts is this happening? This is like nighttime. Yeah. You guys are. Uh... He's probably busy tinkering. Oh, my mic's been muted. <laughs> Whoops. I was like, oh. maybe Ethan's reading a good book? I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Playing with little Frank. Bishop had a brain fart. That's where he was before all this. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Ethan will join him on over. All right. The three boys wander on over to Anity Gray's. And uh, as you guys kind of walk up to up to her house, she kind of stands up out of her chair. Uh, it's real subtle, all three coming at once. But uh, come on in. And she opens up her door, and you guys kind of walk in. She has a very, very small, almost the smallest house you've seen here. But it's just a one-room kind of cabin look. And she says, uh, all right, shut the door behind you. And she... Uh, once you guys are all in, she kind of turns up the light on a lantern she has on a table near her bed. And she says, All right. Well, I, I got... I don't, I don't know which one of you wants this, but I only got one. And she uh, opens a, uh, a large wooden chest that she has next to that table. And a big heavy creak and a thunk. And because you guys are, are near it, but not next to it, you guys can see that it's full of stuff. Um, but she grabs, she, she pulls the top layer of what looks to be some kind of some kind of blanket or cloth off. And she reaches in and pulls some very strange shaping uh, item out of it. And uh, she kind of gives it a good shake and uh, walks over to y'all. And says, all right, well, I only got one of these. And she hands out a uh, gas mask. She says, it's a little dirty, but, uh, I, I mean, it kept me alive through some really shitty stuff. And uh, I was supposed to turn it in, but I thought it might be good to keep one on hand in case shit hits the fan even further. But, uh, I mean, let's be real here. I'm not going to leave these kids, so, I mean, what good is one mask going to do me? I wouldn't be able to pick one kid to put it on anyhow. And she hands you... This thing. I mean, no picture, but... Um, when equipped, the gas mask gives immunity to airborne environmental effects and resistance to ambient radiation, but gives disadvantage to wisdom perception checks. And she will hand that to whoever takes it and says, you know, I, I wish that I could give you more. I, I've got some useful stuff, but it's all just old. This is the best that I got. I've got my gun. And enough to keep me and the kids safe, but I figured if y'all are going to be acting like soldiers out there and adventurers that, you know, maybe this will maybe prove luckier for you than it was for, well, for me. And she kind of finishes her cigarette and tamps it out next to her bed. I'm going to kind of look at Anders and be like, Well, um, hmm. I don't think he needs it. <laughs> I don't think the cool needs one, and I've got my own. So, well, oh. so congratulations, yeah. Bishop. You've got a gas mask. Hmm, wonderful. That was easy. <laughs> 
when loot, dis when loot, when loot distribution goes perfectly. <laughs> she kind of nods. She's like, oh, well, all right, then. That worked out really fucking well. Glad, <laughs> glad I could help. Oh, where you got one? Maybe you are finding... Maybe you do have a little more luck finding stuff. Where'd you get a gas mask from? And she turns to Ethan. Venture a secret. Of course. Hmm. Well, I mean... Shit. To come across yeah. anything interesting out there. And and she, she... Like, you just get flashbacks to all the NCR guys handing you lists and bottle caps and everything else, and it seems like you're just... <laughs> Everybody's gopher. She's like, ah, ah, never mind. You know, I really don't need nothing. And honestly, I mean, if you're out there and you see something that would be nice for the kids, I would appreciate any kind of learning books or, you know... Toys. What? Or a toy. Oh, to toys. Yeah, toys. I guess toys are, are important for kids, I suppose. I thought you said boys. <laughs> that's, that's what I thought, too. I mean... We got. Yeah, just I, find some boys for the kids. I don't know what kind of yeah. scavenge odds you were going to, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, toys, any kind of learning stuff, anything that can help them have a, a normal. And she uses air quotes. Childhood. <laughs> I, I'd appreciate you keeping an eye on for that. I I have a stash of money. I'll pay you handsomely for whatever you have. Let's not involve none of these NCR people or Brom in this. So. If we can keep it between ourselves, I'd appreciate that. Of course. And if it's just something I found along the way, you don't have to worry about pay. Now Y'all are tight. It's tight enough around here, I can tell. Well, let's let's just see what you come back with, and maybe you'll be stepping to a different tune. My Saiyans are losing their meaning over the... <laughs> Uh, uh, all right, well, I mean, that's all I got for you now. Now you guys get, and you take care out there. Hope to see you all again. And, uh, you guys, just curious, and as she's walking you towards the door, um, you, you all never found that, uh, that safe out there, did you? I don't think that we got far enough out there to actually... Hmm, oh, all right. Get where that safe was. We got as far as camp. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, they didn't give me exact coordinates around there, but they said it was out that way, so... If your travels take you back there, just, just keep it in mind. I, I don't know. I mean, shit, that could be a rumor, too. I don't trust anything nobody says nowadays. Y'all have a good night and safe travels, okay? Of course. Thanks again, Anna. All right, you guys have a gas mask, which I'm sure is like stuffed under somebody's shirt as you walk back to the guard station. <laughs> what do you mean? I have it strapped to my hip. It's just covered up by my jacket. Ah, the duster. Yes. Um, and you guys make your way back. Twelve eighteen is still in the corner tinkering. I imagine it's worth looking a little different. Not quite. Outwardly, not really. But, uh, maybe a couple more seams. <laughs> Alright. You guys settle in for the night. And if, uh, if you're telling 1218 or not, I don't know. I don't know why you'd hide it. Uh, yeah. Don't know why we tell it. <laughs> I'm sure 1218 would want one. <laughs> Think of how cute Bitsworth would look with a gas mask. <laughs> A gas mask and a top hat, right. Yes. That would look terrifying. Oh. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> it Actually, would very oh. much like not to die from radiation. It will cover his mustache. <laughs> uh, we can't do that. Uh, that's uh -huh. right. We'd have to shave his mustache down a little bit to fit underneath the gas mask. That way it gets a proper seal. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Where did that hair come from? Was that some raider clippings as you were just consolidating the box? It's, a, it's metal. It's, I think it's literally thing. just a... I thought it was just like a fake mustache off one of those gag glasses. <laughs> or, or that. <laughs> Alright. So you guys settle in for the night. 
And uh, I think as uh, dawn breaks, you guys have collected all your things. Um, and whenever you want to head out, they're not going to stop you um, as you guys kind of wake up uh, if you head out. You see even more, even more uh, uniforms milling about Withervale. All of them having either a clipboard or a, uh, a radio walkie-talkie of some kind or something in their hands, and they're in a hurry to get somewhere. Um, well, where were you, sorry, a lot whenever we came in? We could have used your hail. Are you just shouting that to the air in front of you? Is the... <laughs> or as they walk by? I'm just kind of uh, muttering as I'm <laughs> seeing them all walk by, yeah. They, they look at you, and they look you up and down, and they just keep walking. <laughs> They, like, they, they notice that you are wearing familiar insignia, but, you know, you're not their direct boss and they have to go somewhere to do something. So they don't actually respond to you, but uh, if you guys are heading towards towards leaving, Braum would definitely kind of make an appearance. Yeah, I think... What do you guys say? Time to go? Uh... Head back up Just to about, so. I think so. Oh, uh, but we need traveling supplies. Like, most importantly, food. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I still have a little bit of sash. Not enough for everybody, but... Yeah, uh, Ethan is 100% out of rations. <laughs> Uh, so, in terms of food, uh, while you have been in town, uh, that does replace. They have been feeding and watering you, uh, so you can mm -hmm. grow up to be, what? you know, big adventurers. <laughs> um, so you do not have to deduct for the last two days. Right. Um, Ethan is still out of rations. <laughs> this is also true. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah, on the um, on the in the dock, that was the uh, food stuff, right? Uh, as per regular, yep. Uh, hi, anonymous giraffe. I'm also looking at the caps numbers for pure drink and pure food. Um, so you can get uh, irradiated or radiated um, food or drink for four caps for a one servings worth. You can get. Uh, pure food or pure drink um, for eight caps because while the area is a little bit strapped, uh, the NCR um, apparently replicants who keep cloning themselves and coming into the town uh, are sufficing off of NCR supplies. So they are not actively eating the town's food, so there is no shortage. Mm -hmm. so the eight caps is for one meal or one day of food slash drink? Uh, where did we fall on that front? How many caps does everybody have in their inventory? Zero. Uh, four hundred and thirty-three. Uh, four hundred and sixty-three caps. I have two hundred and eighty-one. <laughs> I don't recall where it came from, but I have them there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> I he's bought armor. Of, yeah, he spent all of his yeah. on a freaking yeah. tactic. Yeah, I only bought a long bow, which or a compound bow, which isn't terribly. I also uh, apparently have a first aid kit that I forgot was in my thing. Uh, and that's going to be. Um, I do believe that was per serving, and we said three water servings and two food servings per day, uh, to okay. avoid. I think it was opposite. Oh, it would definitely be more water than food. Oh, yeah. Three yeah. drinks, two foods. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. Shit. I got it right off the top of my head. I love it. So then um, end up being almost 40 caps of for, per day for food and drink. Yeah. A lot of the time, it's a lot easier to uh, harvest it on the side. I mean, hey, it's only 20 caps a day to eat, if you don't mind, you know. <laughs> a little scrambling. A little scrambling over your insides, you know. Or if your insides are already scrambled. 
This is also true. The real reason why ghouls live for 200 plus years is because everything they need to eat or drink is cheap. Um, so, uh, to handle as such, um, you can go ahead and just type in chat, uh, the amount of purchase, uh, and then deduct caps as equivalent. All right. And how much of a discount did we get for being in good favor? 30%. E. More math. Um... <laughs> Yeah, twelve eighteen. We'll buy food if food is if caps are short. Or something. Yeah, I'm going to pick up more MREs and purified water off the uh, the R. Uh, and then eventually, I should be able to macro off of your resource slots um, to auto pull. Um, but for now, I don't. Um, so we will just... Let's see. Five days worth of food would be ten food items. It's and... 200 for five days. Or, well, 140 with the discount. Hmm. Cool. Because that's exactly how many I'm buying. <laughs> so, does that apply with the NCR that is currently occupying Withervale? I'm sorry, you were asking if you get a discount because NCR is there now? Like, it, does the, the contract still hold up? Yeah. Um, like, if, if I was buying MREs and purified water stuff from the NCR that is in Withervale, does that 30% still apply? Yeah, I mean, so in order to get your discount, you have to make sure you're not going through the NCR people, but absolutely. Like, everybody from Withervale is super on board with the 30%. They just, like, conveniently don't want to tell the NCR about that because the NCR would not yeah. uphold that. Yeah, so they'll be acting as the middleman. Yeah, basically. Okay, I'm cool with that. Shady backroom dealings, you know. Yeah. Woo! I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> um, so let's see. For five days, that's ten MREs and... Three times five is fifteen. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, with that little bit of math, uh, if we get a clear destination in mind on where the next part of this trip is going, uh, we will need to take a short break, five to ten, um, to get that settled in, and then we will bring us back. To, actually, I'll bring us to the world map right now, so that we can all decide on where. Where the people's goings? I think the plan was to head to Cam to get more cams. Cam yeah, for cams? Get more cams. <laughs> yeah, how are you feeling that next day, Anders? Ugh. Feels good. You threw up right outside your bed. I'm sure that felt great. Yeah, the permanent minus two to. Oh no, so the per disadvantage on all ability checks. He's great, right? <laughs> hey, hey, you you could still take Jet and ignore that. Because then you're not withdrawing. Just yeah, take but I don't have Jet. <laughs> <laughs> the robot has all of my Jet. Yeah, and you know that the robot has all your Jet, so I wonder how that's going to go. Uh, you and know. you know someone who's really good at pickpocket it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favors abound. So if you can get that from them, and then I'll owe you a favor. Okay. All right. So you said you're heading towards Chem when you let out. We will um, go on our five to ten minute break here. And when we get back, we will roll the winds stat to see where it places it as you guys head out of Withervale. Unless you already did it, which never mind. Sorry. All right. So the winds are where the winds are. Winds are. Okay. Break now. Drinks time. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Hi, this is John from Pilot. 
to listen to our new album Turn the Heat. It's now on the YouTube Music Store. said, quote, ain't that a hole in the boat? My head keeps spinning. I go to sleep and keep grinning. If this is just a beginning, my life is going to be beautiful. She's telling me we'll be wet. She sticks out a king-size bed. I couldn't feel any better or I'd be sick. Tell me quick, boy, ain't love a kick. Tell me quick, ain't love a kick. Hey, it's Rosalia. Check out my album El Mal Querer in the new YouTube Music app. To the town of our free road, a stranger one fine day. Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. No one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip. The stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. It was early in the morning when he rode into the town. He came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around. He's an outlaw loose and running, came the whisper from each lip. And he's here to do some business with a big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. In this town there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. Many men had tried to take him and that many men were dead. He was vicious and a killer though the youth of 24. And the notches on his pistol numbered one in 19 more. One in 19 more. Stranger started talking, made it plain to folks around. Was an Arizona Ranger, wouldn't be too long in town. He came here to take an outlaw back alive or maybe dead. And he said it didn't matter, he was after Texas Red. After Texas Red. Wasn't long before the story was relayed. Texas Red. But the outlaw didn't worry, man, the tried before were day. Twenty men had tried to take him, twenty men had made a slip. Twenty-one would be the ranger with a big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. The 
When morning passed so quickly, it was time for them to meet. It was twenty past eleven when they walked out in the street. Folks were watching from the windows, everybody held a breath. They knew this handsome ranger was about to meet his death. About to meet his death. There was forty feet between them when they stopped to make their.
boot. That. Boo, ooh, ooh. Oh, also, um, hmm. I know I said it explicitly um, for Ethan, but if you can all mark inspiration on your character sheets. Yay! Or uh, inspired. <laughs> I, I, I felt like the beginning of this session uh, very much like fit together and jived, and I really enjoyed it. All righty. Um, where were we? Oh, morning. Good morning. <sighs> Good morning. <laughs> Where's my coffee? Uh, yeah, you can have some of the warm brown liquid that's being passed around out front. They've got have some uh, drugs. <laughs> Is is that the subtlety that you can manage in the morning? More tongue in cheek, but yeah. He he just hands you a, a, a like a metal mug full of coffee. Here's all the drugs we got. Close enough. And uh. Um. So at, at at that, you guys all have your you sling back your coffee. It it tastes coffee ish, probably smells a little better than it tastes, and uh, everybody kind of sets. We've always known as coffee. Exactly. Well, except for maybe Anders, he might know what actual coffee tastes like. <laughs> but does he remember? <laughs> uh, those were the days. And how much of that brain is able to focus on the the remembering days with your? With your addiction slowly getting worse. It's invading all your thoughts. Alright, so you guys are packing up any other things that you want to get last minute, say so. Otherwise, I will assume you all are heading out. Uh, Brom will stop by and, and wish you well. Um, and he seems to be, uh, got big bags under his eyes. Uh... Thank you for everything. Um, of course, you're always welcome here. I'm sure you've heard that quite a bit, but you're you're always welcome to come back whenever. Um, so, you know, good good luck in whatever you're doing. And he looks at you all who are pretty well packed, I'd imagine, like ready to go out for another long-term adventure. Not one he sent you out on this time. Yee. Yeah. Uh, and Don't worry, we'll be back soon. Oh. Good fun. oh, oh, good, good to hear. I, I, I'm glad. It's always, it's always nice to have, and he kind of leans in a little bit. It's always nice to have a reliable group of adventurers, and s some some NCR uh, sergeant yells for him, and he he kind of jumps a ah. little bit. Wait before you go. Oh uh, yeah, and yes. Answer him. The code to get in is still same. Yes. Uh, he, when you ask that, he kind of looks over to the NCR guard that's standing near the post, uh, at the entryway, close enough to hear, and the NCR guard kind of gives him a single nod, and he says, yes, 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 this, exactly the same, mm hmm Good, and he plans to change it in the next few days? No, no plans, and he again kind of looks to the side to check, and the NCR guy <laughs> shakes his head. Uh, no, 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 no plans to change it! Uh, no. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, have, uh, be safe. Okay, I gotta go. Bye. And he, he just seems a little more strung out than, uh, he has in the past. But wishes Maybe you well. someone's been dipping into his own jet. Mayhap. Yeah, Anders, you're here sniffing out a little bit of drug use yourself. Alright, so you guys make your way out. Um, we have already rolled to find out where the winds are for you this time. And, uh, they're making their clockwork. You guys head out and, uh, get down to the main part of the road here. And we'll use this to indicate the party as per usual. You guys make it, uh, to the road and, uh, the winds are, are pretty close to you right now. Um...
And I think before we had used every every block was about an hour and a half or two hours, right? Hour and a half, I believe. Cool. So I will let you guys take control of stuff and we will um, be in charge of moving the winds as the day progresses. So after, oh after you guys move, we will roll to see where the winds are. And we'll go one at a time. Um, nothing looks, uh, nothing looks amiss as you head out to the main road, though. Everything looks pretty much the same, although you do see lots of footprints all over the place that weren't really there before on this, on this road. What's left of the road. Nothing to it. I'm going to go ahead and move us. <laughs> Alright, and almost parting ways for you. The uh, the winds move out of your way as you continue down straight. Um, even though the winds have parted, you, you still, because of the, the dust and the gray kicked up from on either side, of the road. You don't really see too far ahead. Um, but again, you see more of the same. Lots of footprints. Your first travel through this road when you went up to Chem the first time did not have nearly as many. Are there catapult tracks as well? Um, you see some, some crushed grass uh, down over Hyan, off the side of the road. Um, you don't see any any like big wheel tracks on the road itself, though. Looks like they probably just crushed through off the side. Maybe it was too big, maybe they just wanted to keep the soldiers on the road, you're not sure. Hmm. Either way. Next square. Alright. Alright, so you're well into morning now. Um, it's probably about 11am. Nearing lunchtime, you fear the winds behind you. Can I... No, not yet. Uh, go ahead and move, move again, if you will. Next square! All right, and can I have somebody roll a fateful d20, please? Of course. All right, yeah, you um, you hear the winds behind you, and then all of a sudden to the south of you, but uh, nothing, nothing has changed. Although the the front, um, your front view is is starting to come into focus, and uh, as you'll remember from your very first times meeting each other on the road over here. <laughs> um, this area is, is a little bit more um, desert-like, you know, some more dust, um, less, 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 uh, less lush greenery uh, than you remember happening at Withervale. And that's more of what you see here. But you see something else that you don't remember, but you're not quite sure. It's still a little far in the distance, but you see what looks like um, like uh, 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 something blocking some of the light over this way. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just going to have my uh, repeater at the ready. Okay. And on we go. All right. The winds are parting for you. As you guys come up, um, you remember uh, the first time you went this way. There was a slight incline here as you come across the crossroads. Um, and as you get closer, uh, a structure does indeed come into view. It, um, it looks like there's a few people in front as well. Um, you're counting anywhere between five and ten. Uh, and it looks like there's there's some fencing or some barricade or buildings that you don't remember being there before. And you hear you hear the noise of of people. Um, you hear the noise of of a steady like ha hammering. 
but you can't quite make it out from where you're at. Hmm. Everything's very tan and dusty. Well, do we keep moving on? Do we detour? I could send Bitsworth to scout overhead. That's a good idea. What are we well, doing? Do that. Send in bits. Send in bits. And uh, on his screen, he'll play what bits is saying. On his face. All right, and he what? What's his range? A mile? Um, I think it's pretty far. <laughs> remember, I think far yeah, enough I to get it was to a mile. Yeah, it it I let's just say it's it's far enough to get to where you guys are looking to get. Um, and remind me again. So Bitsworth, you can display on your display what he sees through his eyes. That's what we did last time. Cool. Uh, All right, great. Because the question was because he could, um, as a robot, he could connect with computers and stuff. And the question was if he could do that with Bitsworth, and it was yes. Gotcha. That's how we worked it out. I don't think we had a had worked out an actual like distance, but a well, mile's fine. I'm not gonna argue. <laughs> I think a mile is is pretty reasonable. I think after that, it might just you know the picture might start to get fuzzy, you know. Yep. Or he might lose his way being called back and go, <laughs> go <laughs> off in the corner. All right, so you send him out uh, straight ahead to scout out what's going on, and you turn yeah, on like, your fly fly up per, like higher into the air and just kind of like get an overhead view of things. Sure, sure, yeah. So he, he flies ahead, and he's kind of flying up before flying forward just so he is out of the view, and luckily it is pretty dusty around there, um, and it keeps him pretty well hidden, and he's able to transmit back to your little tube television. Um, you guys see a scene from a bird's eye view of, uh... He, like, adjusts his antenna to get a better view. You sm smack your own head. Um, <laughs> you, you, you see, um, from up above, you can, you can count, uh, about 12? Tw 12 little, little ants running around. Um, a couple of them are, are stationed outside of, you know, there are three different, uh, little square boxes. Um, and in front of those three square boxes, in front of and north of, there are, it looks like just a, a wall that blocks, that bisects the road. Um, everything, uh, th those boxes and, and the, the walls that bisect the road are all, all dark brown. You imagine they're wood. Um, and you see the, the little 12 ants kind of running in between all of them. Um, they're all similarly colored ants. Um, and, uh, if Bitsworth could put two and two together, you would imagine that these are some kind of, uh, military operation, or at least wearing the same costume. You also see at the very front, um, the wall that bisects where you guys are, pointed towards you. Um, you see something kind of waving in the wind. Uh, it's a, it's the only thing of color that really kind of stands out. It's a, a bright red fabric that you see flailing in the wind. Now, if you want to fly him down a little lower, get a better sight, or call him back, or go forward yourselves, whatever you want to do. You look, got a closer look at that flag, the 1218. <laughs> you go up to the uh, tube. Zoom! <laughs> Zoom! <laughs> Enhance. And, um, Enhance. Enhance. I could try to stealth closer. <laughs> We're gonna come at a... Try, anyway. Alright, so you... He's gonna try to get a bit closer, at least to the flag. See if there's right. any symbols on it. <laughs> Do you want yeah. me to roll anything, or...? 
Yeah, give me a stealth for bits. He's got a lot of new fancy toys, and wow, he, they're very well hidden. Yeah, he, um, maybe he has, like, some kind of very shiny bottom to him, and it almost reflects whatever is looking up at, at him back at themselves. So he just kind of blends in as he zooms down um, to get a better look at what's going on. Uh, as you get a little bit closer, the picture does indeed enhance. Uh, those aren't ants. Those are people. Um, and those are definitely not costumes. They're uniforms. And that flag has a two-headed bear on it in the very center around a bright crimson red. Oh, that's an NCR flag. And uh, as uh, Bitsworth is, is silently hovering... Um, you can't really hear a whole lot, but you see one of the ants um, towards the center of the buildings kind of pointing and shouting um, at the other small ants. And uh, you, you hear a little more clearly the, the sound of hammering, um, and you see another wall being erected this way, bisecting the road. What the hell are they doing? It's blocked so, north and south? It's, uh, yes. Here, let me... Sorry, I will draw. Very, very well drawn. They're not quite that large. Those would be giant walls. But they are blocking the road, effectively. Um, and the one that is to the south, um, blocking the direction that you guys knew the NCR outpost was, um, that one is, is still being erected. They're, they're still hammering it together. Seems like they're finally, to make, finally starting to make a presence. It seems like that's the case, yes. Uh, perhaps we should uh, go and introduce ourselves then. Seems like a fine idea. So yeah, I guess the party Ooh, moves. Approach. Yep, yeah, party we'll moves call, up. We'll call uh, it's worth back. Meet up on the way. All right, cool. So you guys uh, kind of proceed to the. Um, we'll just put you at the first fence there, um, and as you guys got closer, you you see that there is like a little um, a gate to it. It's currently closed, um, and you see that that flags the the colors that were on that flag in a in a hastily drawn uh, bear blob with two heads. Uh, painted on the side of the doorway. Um, and as you approach, you hear uh, you hear what sounds like a, a clunking of wood, and then a, a gun cocking, and uh, a shout. Stop right there! I'm going to step to the fort of the group. Hey, hey, easy there, fella. And um, it, as you step to the front, uh, Bishop, you can you can see uh, an eyeball peeking through a, a peephole near the door, and they uh, they're like, "Who? Who's that?" Associated with the Gunrunners, we're coming back from Withervale. Pretty <laughs> nasty mess they got there. <laughs> Bishop? Oh shit! It's Bishop. Let him in. Open the door. And uh, you hear a, a, a another uh, big wooden clunk, and then a big creak as the whole wall shakes as the door opens. Um, obviously not quite as sturdy as their normal structures are. Um, and when the door creaks open, uh, you guys can kind of walk a little forward, and they kind of gesture you all in. And he says, uh, hey, hey, uh, wow. I didn't think I'd see you again. I heard shit really shit. hit the fan at Withervale. Yes, shit did really hit the fan. Oh, well, it's good to see ya. Uh, come on in. I mean, you know, 
we're just getting set up over here. And um, as he's kind of like gesturing you all in, you hear um, a, a loud booming shout and footsteps marching towards you all. Uh, uh, Sergeant, what are you doing? And you guys look and see a large man uh, barreling down towards you off of, because you guys are still on a hill, so barreling down the hill towards you all. Um, with, you know, he's coming through, marching through the dust, kicking up a bunch of dust. And he gets up, up real close to uh, the one who is friendly to you, Bishop, and, and says, the hell you think you're doing? Kind of chalk spitting, yelling into his face. There's letting people in here. We don't even have this wall up yet. And he looks at you, Bishop. Yep, and I'm just going to kind of give him a casual salute. And he kind of, like, eyes you down, and he sees... I'm guessing you have the insignia on your duster, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's emblazoned on the shoulder. It's yeah. The patch. And and he, he kind of sees that, and he's like, Well, we can't just let everybody in here. Who are your friends? And he'll, oh. he'll return the salute. They are compatriots that uh, helped out with Withervale. We're heading back up to Kem. <laughs> heading back up to Kem? Oh, I don't know what you all expect to find up there. <laughs> you better hurry, too. And he kind of chuckles at uh, no one. Like, no no one seems to be chuckling with him, but he kind of just chuckles to himself. They're, uh... What was that? <laughs> oh, well, you've been out of the loop for a minute then, haven't you? A couple of days. Yeah, uh, we, uh, that's ours now. Just like this here, this here post. And he kind of, you know, straightens up, puffs up a little bit. This is the new NCR outpost out here. Once, yeah, uh, you guys have made a good amount of work in a couple of days. Once we, once we, uh, took over Withervale, I, uh, came up here to replace Captain. And, uh, I'm the head out here now. And, and he just kind of, you know, looks off in the distance, not necessarily to anybody in particular. And he says, uh, they promoted me. They, they saw, they saw that I was, uh, well-deserving and able to secure this place. It's, uh, it's a crossroads here. It's pretty important. We're still, uh, still building it out. And he looks around and kind of, you know, gestures for the men who have stopped working and banging things and kind of watched what's going on to get back to work. Well, it's good to see more of you out here, finally. I know the outpost down south was uh, running pretty much skeleton crew. No more of that here. Um, they funded yeah, us now. Uh, yeah, I would expect that they would whenever the word Legion came in. He, he, uh, he gets real close to you when he hears that, and he says, Now you keep that to yourself. Yeah. We don't need to start Everybody an uprising. Everybody already knows. He, um, he dismisses the sergeant to go, you know, back to his guard post over to the left of the door and, uh, gestures you guys a little bit away from everybody else to continue the conversation. And he kind of gives you the grand tour of three shacks that are hastily built that contain much of nothing and don't even have doors or windows yet. Um, but he, he's very proud. Uh, the grand tour, indeed. The grand tour, <laughs> yes. He, he, you know, does the whole, um, as far as the, the grand sweeping arm of nothing. And uh, he says, it, I mean, it doesn't look like much now, but we're building it out and it, it'll be a, a great outpost. They, we got rid of the one down there. And uh, this is this is where we are now. And, uh, well, what? And he kind of looks to the left and the right. He's like, how do you know about the Legion? And, uh, well, there was this, uh, certain little coin that we got off of the leader of the raiders who attacked Withervale. Uh, looked like a Legion Denarius. Are you handing him the coin, or are you just talking about it? I- I don't have the coin. Liam still has the coin. Uh, no, he does not have the coin. He picked it up initially. But he, um, so, so as, as you guys are talking about the coin, you guys can have it, whoever wants it, among your inventory. But, um, Liam was, the captain will reveal to you, was the reason that they found out in, in the first place. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, Liam, uh, like a good soldier does, as soon as he found out word, he uh, ran straight away to tell us and give us a heads up. And, well, I'm sure I don't need to tell you the second NCR hears about Legion. They'll, uh, they'll find a way to make that outpost a little bit stronger. Mm, quite. But, uh... Yeah, I mean... You know what makes an outpost stronger? Uh... Extra firepower. I was gonna say, if it's you, you're probably gonna tell me guns. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well... I don't want to keep you here. I mean, I don't have much for you. I barely got enough to keep the soldiers going as as I am now. We're we're hoping to send a send a small crew to Withervale. Maybe they have some supplies they can spare for us uh, until mm. until the NCR gets a gets a shipment out here. Uh, but you're free to you're free to pass through on up to Chem if you'd like. But uh, like I said, you better hurry. They're uh they're fixing the well <laughs> they're fixing to close that down if you know what I'm saying. Hmm. Make it over, rebuild, repair some of the buildings, make a Ford outpost, I'm assuming. You know, well, you didn't hear it from me. And he winks awkwardly. You didn't hear it from me, but, uh, I don't think they got repairing in mind with what they took up there. No. Oh. And what is it that they might have taken up there? Well, he, he gestures around at his grand base and says, Well, they didn't exactly leave us much of anything to build with. They took a lot of, uh... Took a lot of materials and a lot of, uh... Well, a lot of explosives up north. And my eyes kind of get a gleam to them <laughs> at the mention of explosives. Hmm, you don't say. Well, we'll have to get up there then. I'll let you get back to, uh, fortifying your new outpost. Yeah, yeah, they'll, uh, they'll let you through up north whenever you're ready, and, uh, you know, as long as you're with your group here, you'll have free passage through. I hope you all understand you need to have, well, someone of a rank with you. Of course. Alright, be on your way now. And he, he turns to the, the wall that's being built down here and sees one of the, like, two of the soldiers just kind of sitting down. He's like, hey! Hey, get back to work! And goes storming off towards them. Well, looks like we better double time it to Kim. Um, and it is about, I think, three in the afternoon right now. Because each block Ish. is about an hour and a half or so. Yep. But, uh, proceed as you will. Cool. So, yeah. Outpost proper. Okay, cool. And I think we decided we're tracking food and drink at the end of the day, right? Like, what you used that day. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. since we had a meal in the town for breakfast, we only need to take off one food and, like, two drink. Yeah. Alright, yeah, you guys move through the post, so we'll we'll start, uh... Go ahead and move move to the next block, if you like. Yep. All right, so as you guys get a little further on, um, it's about 4.30, 5 o'clock, you, um, you see the road ahead of you. Uh, you see s some marching uh, footprints here. And maybe some bad memories in your brains. Um, you know that Kem is, if you were to keep pushing through, straight through without resting, you'd probably reach Kem just as the sun was setting. Um, but it sounds like there's only friendlies there, so... What you want to do? I guess we keep pushing. Unless if anybody else has anything they want to be doing. Not in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. Alright, cool. go for it. Yeah. Somebody give me a d20 roll. I roll 
killed the last one. Got it. All right. Some lucky d20 rolls. Yeah, you guys see much ado about nothing. It's quieter than it was before. Um, you don't feel like somebody's watching you like you did the first time you came through here. Um, and you start to hear some commotion uh, towards Kem. Go ahead and move forward. And we are in Kem. In Kem. Moving maps. Oh my gosh, so zoomed in. Holy crap. <laughs> Alright, so you guys are coming in right here. If you want to place yourselves on. Alright, so you guys are coming in from the south there, um, <laughs> and you have a little bit more room before you're, like, literally on top of the cards, but they, they, uh, they stop you, and they, uh, they, they don't really speak a whole lot, um, they kind of look down, and they see your, your insignia, uh, bishop, they kind of give you a nod, and they say, uh, who, who, who's the rest with you? Hmm. Traveling companions. What's we, your business uh, here? I'm just passing through. <laughs> this is uh, part of where we first spotted the raiders. We just wanted to make sure that we weren't missing anything. I see. Well, uh, I guess you got well, less than a few hours before you ain't seen nothing here anymore. Go on. But hmm, uh, right. don't make trouble. Wasn't planning on it. And as you guys... Just make sure to give a good shout before you start lighting off everything. <laughs> oh, oh, you'll know before we light her up. Uh, and as you guys proceed, you see exactly what you saw the first time. Um, w one side of Kem is, like, very badly burnt. Um, and the other side is not so bad, just kind of dilapidated. Um... But, uh, you see, as you proceed throughout the streets, you, um, see guards just in and out of homes, uh, crawling over rubble. You see a couple of them, uh, with what looks like a, a roll of some kind of twine or wire. They're just kind of weaving in between the buildings. Um. You see a couple soldiers with, uh, very full packs on their back. Um, and a clipboard in their hands, going from house to house. Oh, this is going to be a grand fireworks display. What are you guys doing? You going up to a guard? You going in a house? I think we'd be beelining it to the mansion, where we had seen the Hell yeah. Family. Where they were bringing stuff. Yep. Alright, the mansion on the hill. Um, so as you remember from before, Kem was kind of this, like, strange built-out home in between a, a very, like, valley. Like, there's m not mountains on either side, but this is the only passable road. There's growing hills on either side. And all of it leads up to that big mansion you see at the end there, which has the more guards than are depicted there. They're all inside, but... You see uh, slightly better armored guards outside as you make your way up there. And uh, one of which steps forward and kind of puts a hand up and puts a finger up and just does the no, no, no. Says, you're not allowed in here. There's something you looking for? Just wanted to go in, take a look. Um, there were some raiders here, and we wanted to see if they might have left anything behind, maybe indicating a second attack. You seem like an upstanding fellow. Why not just let us in for 15 minutes or so, and we'll be on our way. 
and I am trying to essentially charm him into All right. letting us in. So, wisdom saving throw of, I think it's 15, no, 13, 14, 14. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Um, let's see, officer, so, duh, duh. There's the text. Fuck. So. Well, I know you want to do uh take a look around. Um, unfortunately, that's uh, even with your status, uh, providing armaments for us. Uh, it's just it's. This is where we're designing our plans for defending this region and area. I mean, even if you worked in the NCR, even if you worked for us as a requisition, it'd be above your pay grade as it is. And with you being an outsider, absolutely not. Hmm. That's a bit of a shame. And tell me, can you, uh... Who do you report to? Just in the event that there is a second attack? I want to let them know who is responsible for, uh, prevent... Uh, allowing it to happen. Yeah, that's gonna be Captain Richards, who's going to be the oversight in this area. Captain Richards. Right. Right. Was there uh was there something in particular you were looking for? I'm, I mean I don't want to be discourteous. Uh, any kind of documentation, paperwork, anything written down kept in one any of the rooms. Probably something a little centrally located. With anything with the name uh Reagan on it. Uh, you know, honestly, no, nothing that I've seen. Lots and lots and lots of drugs. Um, but it looks like all of their plans were, you know, either spoken or, you know, drawn in some dirt. Let's see. So, other than the drugs, anything else that was found inside of the building, um, armament-wise? Your typical raider garbage. Hmm. Shame. Bullets I wouldn't even use for training rounds. That bad, huh? It's typical. Hmm. Not wrong. Well, if you and your men happen to do find something in that building, let me know, okay? We're all trying to do the same thing here. It's just, you know, we've got to stop anything from the north. Hmm. Do you have reason to believe there might be stuff coming from the north? It's the only acceptable pass. Hmm. I mean, I suppose you couldn't consider them drugs, but a bunch of them lesion coins in here, too. That... And where there's more than one, there's bound to be more forces. Let me see. Did you happen to, uh, grab any of the coins? Could I take a look at one? Uh, you can, uh, speak to the requisitions officer if you're looking to inspect any evidence. I don't think you'll be able to take any. Um, but he'll be, uh, last I checked, he was finishing up in what looked to be their shitty, shitty kitchen area. Hmm. Uh, that'll be, uh, Sergeant Jake in the, uh, in that area. Sergeant Jake. Right. I'm gonna look back at everybody else who's with me. Any questions for this fine soldier? Why destroy everything? It's the best way to make an impassable area. 
If we only have to worry about trickle through this part of the north and trickle through the northern part of Withervale, this area is secure and we can bring food in. It's a lot easier to defend when you can center in one spot and respond. Hmm. And do you plan on keeping a uh, detachment up here? Or is it going to be more monitored from a distance? Well, in this area, uh, no, because it's going to be blown to shit. Hmm. But, well, I mean, we'll always have scouts in this area, and that outpost will be ready to respond to any threat. Understood. And you said the, uh, requisitions officer, Sergeant Jake, is, uh, over by their kitchen area? Yep. Hmm. Okay. Turn to look at the group. Kind of motion. I, uh, I want to kind of huddle in. Hey, should I ask about the safe? Do you think that the safe was here? Uh, if it is, they might have found it. Hmm, that's a good point. I'm going to turn back to, uh, this officer. Did you happen to find a safe in the building at all? <clears throat> no, I mean... Nothing that was readily accessible. I mean, we did flip the place, so I would say...
go over the coin. Yeah. Basically identical to the same one that I'm carrying. Yeah, um, the one that you are carrying is um, well worn. Um, have you ever had like those stones with the like the thumbprint in the middle? That, yes. that has been worn down. That's the one that you have. Like it's the the logos that are on it, the words that are on it are almost worn off as if somebody was constantly rubbing it. Um, but this coin looks a little dirtier, but is the same. Gotcha. And uh, it, Anders, the uh, Sergeant Jake is kind of giving you that uh, that shack gif with the shoulders. You know, looking at you as he's like, stuff goes missing all the time. Shake, 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 shake. Yeah, well, uh, you know, prices are high these days. They sure are. And he turns around in the cabinet and uh, reaches for a bottle above the, the shelf of the drugs. And as he brings the bottle down, he accidentally knocks into a pack of... Uh, jets and a pack of mentats and says oh look at me so clumsy and slowly picks him up on <laughs> off the ground i'm lucky i have literally zero caps <laughs> <laughs> you have friends yeah but friends that aren't gonna buy me drugs <laughs> Those friends are actively keeping me from drugs. Oh, the so definition one of, the of friends friend. participated in drugs with you. Just in a separate location. That is very not true. That, not that anyone would really know that. Would would Anders know that? Did you both do it openly to each other? Or? So he was so. at the back whenever he took his inhaler. I was at the front just to... I used it basically as a last resort against Reagan because I was about to go down. Mm. It was like, yep, okay. Shotgun to the face. That solved that problem. Okay. Um. Mm. I'll just place the coin back down on whatever, like, the flat, the uh, first flat surface is near him. Let's see. And, uh, would you mind if I take a look at your, uh, intake report? Uh, see what all has been found. Sure, sure. And he kind of hands you the, the clipboard with, uh, the, the pen attached to the clipboard and just holds onto the pen. Hmm. So it's, like, tethered to him. So it can't go yeah. in. It's kind of, it's kind of all I'm responsible for, so if I lose this, I kind of, <laughs> no. I mean, no, no, perfectly understandable. Doesn't get much lower than the requisition position, so. I mean, I suppose I could be on latrine duty, but that's. This was my upgrade from that, so. Yeah, no need for you to get back to the latrine duty, right? Dealing drugs is better than dealing shit! Hmm. Perhaps don't say that quite so loud. So, looking at his requisition sheet, um, I'm looking for things like weapons, ammunition, um, any other things that might be useful. Uh, looking for stuff that they found from the raiders, as far as, like, weapons, yeah. ammunition, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's basically food, water, ammunition, guns... I basically want to know everything that they found, other than drugs. Because I can very clearly see their drug stash. Basically, a multitude of zip rifles and cowboy repeaters, uh, and a bunch of low-grade ammunition. Um, most of the food um, items you can see written, and then... Um, there's also a separate column where, where it was requisitioned and then used. Um, a lot of them have been found and then immediately consumed or shipped off. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, doesn't look like they had a whole lot here.
no um one last thing armor not anything of note listed just kind of junk stuff uh, armor 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 and he he kind of pulls the clipboard back uh no there was something weird that we found uh hold on a second and he kind of flips over the pages and then he's like, yep, 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 and hands you back the clipboard, but holds onto the pen, and then turns back to the cabinet. And he reaches in and pulls out um, a folded piece of paper. And it looks pretty badly crumpled. Um, and he hands it to you, and it is the brochure that you guys have of Crater Lake. Um, but inside of this, it has a, uh, like a big red X marked on part of the the picture of Crater Lake. Interesting. But, so it's actually on Crater Lake itself that the X is marked. Yeah. Mhm. Um so like the 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 picture on the let me see if we can pull this up on the stream. Meh. Handouts. Yay, brochure. Yeah. So um you guys see the mark on if you're looking at the brochure you see the big X right underneath it where it says visit and explore. You see the, a big X on the mound underneath those words. And you see uh, lava fields with a big slash through it. Interesting. I'm going to um, ask if I could use his pen momentarily. I'll hand him back, like, the clipboard. Yeah, he, he trades, yeah. He's, yeah. He, he looks nervous at that, and then kind of holds out the other hand for the clipboard, and then he'll switch with you. Yep. Gladly switch with him. I'll pull out my brochure and mark it exactly the same. Cool. And I'll hand him the brochure back. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why that's interesting, but, you know. I mean, you know what they say, X marks the spot or something, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. That was kind of my thinking, and if it was marked there by them, they might have something interesting there. I mean, I'd love to hear how they got there. I hear Crater Lake's impassable. Hmm. I don't even know if it's a lake anymore. Can't get through the winds. But, I mean, I just got here, so maybe you know better than I do. Yeah, I haven't been here long myself, so who knows? For some hearing of Crater Lake being impassable. Well, I mean, if you can make it through the winds, I mean, I imagine there's something still. There's got to be something still there. The mountains are still there. So, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have heard, but there's supposed to be, and he kind of leans in a little, there's supposed to be some kind of scavenge yard around here somewhere. Hope we're not blowing it up here. Be pretty sad if this was the scavenge yard. There ain't nothing here. To be fair, from when we were here the first time, there wasn't a whole lot either. And yeah. It seems like your soldiers have been doing a good job of getting everything to you. Yeah, they're pretty honest folk out there. They got that going for them. His eyes kind of dart back and forth, linger for a second on Anders. Says, well, um, you know, if you guys aren't interested in, um, anything... Um, I know they're, they're, they're planning on, you know, making this place light up here in a couple, uh, I don't know, and he looks at a watch that he doesn't have, uh, and he, uh, he's like, it, I, I think it's, uh, real soon here, like, within the hour. Hmm. We'll make sure we're cleared out by then. Um, just to be clear, did you want to take any of the crappy bullets or weapons or anything that he has mentioned? The Mentats are tempting, but I'm not openly going to be that way. Like, out of character, the Mentats, I want them, but in character, it's one of those things of... Eh. Yeah, you basically have to do a backroom deal with an NCR person or try and steal them. Those are your options. Yeah, basically, and that's not who he is. Gotcha. Alright. So he just kind of stands there, awkwardly twitching. 
and it hops from foot to foot. <clears throat> well, thank uh, you, uh, Sergeant Jake. I'll be sure to report to Captain Richards that you were most useful here. Oh, well, that'd be great! I mean, I love, I love requisition, because, you know, it gets me other things, but, but I appreciate the good word. And he turns around and starts, like, meticulously straightening the drugs that fell off before and other things. I'm going to just kind of look at everybody else. Anything you want to ask them for? Or ask them about? Nah. Uh, I think we've got all the information we need, and I'm not about to cross paths with the NCR. Hmm. That sucks. I totally had a combat lined up for when you guys crossed the NCR with all of these guys here. rat a tat Damn. <laughs> you aren't going to take our haphazard housing, blow up our already half-blown-up buildings. To be honest, Bishop is kind of twitching because he wants to go into one of these buildings and disarm some of the explosives and take them for himself. That is Anders the one is thing that he will actually he do. <laughs> Anders is twitching because he saw Jet and can't have Jet. What? Well, well. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have done it in the first place. <laughs> Fuck you. That's it. That's what I'm. I knew that as soon as I destroyed a man. There's lots of regrets centered around that, but that doesn't stop your eye from centering on the cabinet. I mean, he looks aware, but he is bending down and kind of sorting through stuff. But I don't think Anders is that kind of man. Anders knows he does not have those kind of skills. Oh, but you did so well the last time. <laughs> 1218 just knows you, that's all. Get another smack. <laughs> no, now comes out the, the cattle prod, poke, zap. Alright, so... um. Unless, unless you actually are trying to make a ploy, Bishop, to, to try and sneak in and, like, as they're unfurling the explosives, you're, like, following behind, rolling them right back up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could be stealthy, but I'm not that stealthy. <laughs> I mean, I have some Looney Tunes music queued up if you want to just creep, 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 creep. <sighs> um, but, yeah, I think, we'll, I think a good place to end this session would be uh, as you guys are kind of walking out. You, you you feel pretty secure in this area, so you, you can set up safely set up camp just outside of Chem, uh, far enough away. You set up camp as the night has fallen now. Just uh, as you guys settle in to cook whatever dinner you have, you see uh, the, the lights begin to come from the north, and you hear and feel the ground shake as the booming of Chem happens. And a ceremonious end to a chapter in your already crazy history here out in, uh, out west. Yeah. And a single yellow tear will crest down Anders' rotten cheek. <laughs> and all it... the jet being yeah. blown up. It's a lot of drugs. So, I mean, the original reason we were coming north was to head up to Crescent City, correct? That is correct. Uh, well, for some of you. The original reason you guys were coming north the first time, or this time? The first time. Basically, we were told that there was a greater activity up in Crescent City, right? Yes, that is correct. So, uh, Brom told you, way up north, they have a big outpost in Crescent City. Trying to get that to show up on stream. There we go. Crescent City. Up there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, with Kem being blown to smithereens, is there a way for us to still get up to Crescent City? Um, I mean, they they like, blew it up. We have it, could we have mm -hmm. ex exited to the north instead of heading back down south? You absolutely can, um, but you know that the way that they were talking about what their plan was uh, with blowing it up was to create it so that um, no kind of uh, 
uh, aside from a single person or a single line of people um, climbing over rubble, um, on either side of Kem were large hills and like rocky terrain and things. They basically wanted to make it impassable for any kind of um, carts, vehicles, any kind of large caravan of people. Um, it, it, taken with time and effort, you guys could absolutely climb back down if you wanted to go north instead. But it would take some effort, and you're not quite sure what the terrain would hold now that you're blowing stuff up. Uh, you hope that all the explosives would have been detonated, but you never know. And what creatures did it just piss off? Yeah, right. You just blew up my house. <laughs> it's more like we just had a freaking chain explosion go off next to a mountain range. That also. And as you, as you guys uh, may or may not have known, you could have figured out from talking to the NCR people about what uh, the terrain is like up north. And there's, I mean, you guys can kind of see it on the map there. Everywhere that's kind of gray is, is mountainous and hilly. Where it's green is, is more like a, a lush, kind of jungly type thing. Um, and they, they mentioned that it was mountainous to the north. And they're not sure what's up there. They know there's a city far up north, but they're not quite sure how far away, and they're like, honestly, <laughs> we're just going to cut this off at the head. Let that chicken run itself out. Right. So, um, because we do have another game starting at it, we are going to wrap it up, but if you guys want to come to a decision, um, I would super appreciate that. If you guys are going uh, north or south, um, so that we can you know. Well, I th think Ethan Plan. would want to go north, correct? Uh, Ethan's just looking for what, what rumors do I have any semblance of an idea of where? <laughs> the rumors for the, the salvage yard or the resources, mm. they all yeah. point you towards Crater Lake. Like, to right. towards the middle somewhere in there. And they make, like, this circle motion, which clearly indicates they have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> but towards right. that area. So, Ethan wants to head southwest, but he also does not like raiders. So, he would be fine with going north to try and clear out some raiders. All right. And there's this okay with either thing. Yep. Same. Yeah, Bishop's just kind of along for the ride. So, looks like we're going Ethan's route next session. Alrighty. Can, can someone define that in words so that, uh... We are gonna go south oh. and look for the, uh, place. <laughs> With the stuff. The salvage yard. Because Ethan yeah. both hated raiders and had a circle on Crystal <laughs> Lake. I'm like, wait a minute. You guys are so damn agreeable. All right, executive decision. We're going to try and look for the salvage yard. <laughs> I feel yeah. like 1218 is just going to follow the dumb humans wherever the dumb humans human. <laughs> They're kind of like pets that you're trying to keep alive, and they're trying so hard to kill themselves. Maybe you were eyeing that uh, explosive wire like, man, I could make a great <laughs> leash with that. <laughs> Let's tie them Jesus. all together. If they misbehave, just... That cordum. <laughs> just, you don't have to end all the leashes, just one. Okay. Alright, well, we won't <laughs> blow you up. Pfft. I mean, now that you're going south, we won't. <laughs> Alrighty. So, but explosives! I want more explosives! Hey, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure there's some left over, and it sounds like the NCR is, like, just doing that whole, like, stack of money float at Withervale area now. Now that and they know they have super it. Mutants. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Wait, I missed. What did he say? Super mutants. No, there's there's other deadly things out there that we have to introduce you to. I mean, God. All right, rad roaches. Let's go. You guys haven't even seen Ow! that shadow of Crazy, leathery wings flying above you. Oh no. 
I feel like Anders would be much more paranoid about the bat squatch now that he's a drug addict. <laughs> oh my god. It's like the more and more withdrawn you get, like the twitchier you become. So the more paranoid you become. So... Bat squatch took my jet! Get him! Yeah, maybe twelve eighteen is like got like a bat squatch sound or or just whispering bat squatch late into the night enough to freak Anders just out. Just the word bat squatch. Yeah. Like, well, that's what he says as he approaches. <laughs> bat squatch. All right. Well, thank you all for a fun return. Yay! Yay! Yeah, hey, that was fun. <laughs> um, I'm I am slightly confused. Is that guy going to be joining the group? in the future, or can he not join at all now? UJ? Yeah. Um, he is uncertain, so, he, like, everything is kind of up in the air with his it's living fine, situation and stuff, so... Yeah, I remember you, you saying so. Well, if he doesn't want to, or can't, we will need to petition for a fifth. Otherwise, okay. we'll murder you guys. <laughs> I mean, we could scale back only so much, but... We can see Let's... if we can get Ash in here, too. Just to have her Sunday be taken up by D&D completely, since she's going to be in the new Prince's <laughs> Isn't she it's... at work until 8, though? Oh, if that's the case, that sucks. <laughs> mm. Well, yeah. I'm sure there's there's somebody out there. I can try and search around a bit. <laughs> yeah, I do just want to reiterate, like, no, seriously... I will kill you guys if you do not have five people. <laughs> I still almost Need. killed the trade curse, and they had... Oh, they only had four. Yep, we have four. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, it was fun. I gotta mm -hmm. go. Yes. Have a good evening, y'all. And do as well. Good Casey, night. no. Boo murder. <laughs> <laughs>